Hello everyone, welcome to another repair video. So in this video today, we're going to be working on a Nintendo Switch which has been sent in because it won't read games. So the customer contacted me earlier today, said that she's got a Nintendo Switch which won't read any cartridges at all. So I told her to send it in and I'll take a look, see what we can do about getting it fixed. But yeah, generally speaking, this console is in fairly decent condition considering it's a child that uses it. And I've never actually come across one that don't read cartridges before, so I thought that I'd make a video on it. So, the first thing I want to do is I want to do my usual check, and that's to make sure that it's actually drawing a charge. So, I'm going to take my USB amp meter, which is this little thing here, and I'm going to plug my USB Type C into the amp meter. And just plug it in to here. Yes, I know this USB Type C is fairly dirty, but oh well. Uh, right, okay, so this is saying 0 amps, which is interesting because it's on 92%. Let's try it the other way. unable to charge and then ah 0.37 amps so it might just be my USB amp meter these things don't really like USBs too much console battery 92 1.24 1.31 yeah okay that is fast charging fine so it was just my USB playing up so we join a charge which means the battery's good and that the power management chips are good the next thing I want to do is obviously test the touchscreen. Which works. Excellent. Joy Cons work. Insert the game cart. Uh, right, let me get a game. So I have here Minecraft. And uh, there's no game in there at the minute. And yep, that is not reading a game at all. Game card could not be read, okay. Yeah, that is not working. Okay. Right, okay, so issue verified. So let's pop that back in there. Do you like my little hidey hole for the uh, game cards? Anyway, let's take those Joy Cons off. So issue verified, it's not reading the game. So let's go ahead and just take this apart and see what we can do about actually fixing it, shall we? Right, so let's pop that onto the side or onto the front, rather. I'm going to take out the Y00 screws first. So we've got four screws to take with the Y screwdriver and then we're going to swap over to a PH00 so pop these two screws out here there's one these are non-magnetic because Nintendo wanted to be annoying same for this one here Again, non magnetic because Nintendo. We've got one on the side of the Joy Con rail, it's the middle screw. Don't need to take them all out, just that one. I do like how easy these are to disassemble. Nintendo really did make it easy for us to fix these things. No warranty stickers, no void if removed. 
just good old fashioned easy to disassemble right there's one more screw and that's underneath the kickstand hate these bleeding things ah a kickstand that actually works that's rare and one more screw just there and then we can go ahead and pop off the top That was a little bit sticky. Okay. So. Next. Let's pop out that screw there. So these are all Phillips screws. PH00. PH00. The PH00 fits as well. But the 00 is a better fit. And seven silver screws. And that just comes away. Just like so. Excellent. Right, okay, so. It's not very often you actually see them thermal pads on there. They're very rare. Okay, so. Right, what I want to do, first of all, is I want to check and see if the Joy-Cons are charging. They are not. So they're not coming up as charging. Right, let me take my pair out again because that's interesting that should at least flash as charging for the joy cons oh okay yeah never mind that's fine right so joy cons are charging fans working so let's take the heat sink off well let's take that off first but let's take the heat sink off like so there we go so I'm going to try my best to remove this without damaging the foam and no didn't work Oh well, a bit of captain tape, be fine. Okay, so let's get rid of the thermal paste for a start because that's going to need changing. Oh, okay, doc. So we'll put some fresh thermal paste on a bit later. But right now, all I want to do is, well, first of all, disconnect the battery. So let's pop that out. And I'm going to pop out the touch screen. Oh, 
So this is the ribbon for the touchscreen. It passes through the game cartridge slot. Which is very strange because the game game cart's not working but the touchscreen is. So it's a little bit weird that. But uh, it could just be a certain part of it that's gone. Could be dusty, could be water damaged. Uh, anything could have happened. Right, let's take out the three screws that are holding the cartridge slot in. And that just pops right out. And as you can see in there, that looks fairly clean, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a test slot. Um, so I'm going to put, I'm going to put, I'm going to install another slot in here, and I'm going to try and see if it reads again. Then. So this is a non-good card reader or slot cartridge reader rather and if this fixes it then I'll just leave this one in there and uh, well I'll eventually leave this one in there I want to try fixing the other one right so So that's installed. So I'm going to pop a couple of screws in there because I don't want to be damaging this connector at all. So let's pop one there. And yes, I know the black connector's not on. It's fine. There we go. Right, so let's pop the battery back in. So it's that simple to change the, the the game cart reader. It is that simple. Right, so let's turn that on. There we go. Touch screen working. So let's take this test cart again. And could not be red. It's doing it a lot quicker. Now that's working. Yeah, that's working. Don't know what was going on then. But now that's working every time. Right, okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop this into an ultrasonic clean and I'm going to try and clean it. Um, so I apologise for the bad lighting. Let me just get rid of that. There we go. So I'm going to pop this into an ultrasonic clean for three minutes. And it's just going to clean out the entire cartridge. Now, obviously, I do understand that most of you are not going to have an ultrasonic cleaner and the one that i've got is only a cheap little thing you know it's not it's not expensive at all but i do understand that most of you are not going to have an ultrasonic cleaner so you're probably not going to do this this is more just to see if it works but if you want to give this a proper clean out you can desolder these points here and by doing that you're going to be able to get to the actual cartridge reader itself so you're going to be able to get to the pins and stuff. So what I want to do now is I want to put this through an ultrasonic clean because these game cartridge readers are quite expensive on eBay. Um, they're around about £40 to buy one of these. So it's a very, very expensive repair if you have to get someone else to do this. Um, now, obviously, I don't want to spend £40 on a cartridge on a cartridge reader if necessary so I'm going to put it through an ultrasonic clean and I do realize that a lot of you 
don't have an ultrasonic cleaner. However, this is more to see if I can do this without replacing any parts. So I'm going to give this a good clean for a few minutes in the ultrasonic cleaner and see if that fixes it. It could just be dirty and dusty inside. Now, if you get a fine paintbrush, you could use some isopropyl alcohol and just scrub around inside there. Give it a nice clean out and basically that's going to get it. That, that's Most of the time that's going to get it fixed. But I'm going to put it through an ultrasonic clean just to you know, save the hassle of having to get a paintbrush down there. So I'm going to try that. And then I'll be back once this is, well, once this has gone through the cleaner. Right, okay, so this has had eight minutes total in the ultrasonic cleaner. You can see it's really, really shiny now. Very shiny indeed. It's still wet, so I'm going to need to dry it before we can obviously go any further. You can see that it's it's all over my hands because it's still wet. Um, Hopefully this has fixed the issue because uh, I've just taken a look and these cost £50. For this 50 quid for that literally it's absolutely ridiculous uh, you can buy just a cartridge uh, just a cartridge reader for 20 pound but that's obviously going to be a lot more difficult for most people to repair um, and also you've got the risk of damaging the plastic connectors on it as well as well as knocking this BGA chip off by changing that connector You'd have to use, I suppose, low melt solder all the way around. Um, and then just use the soldering iron to get it up. Uh, so it is doable with the right skill and the right pair of hands. But it's probably too risky for the average person to do. So, yeah, if we can get this working without, without obviously, um, damaging it, uh, without replacing it, then... All the better because that will save the customer a lot of money. Um, but yeah, let's let's give it a go. Uh, that's that should be dry by now. I suppose alcohol doesn't take long to evaporate. I've given it a good blow inside as well. So let's disconnect the battery once more. So this has still got my reader inside. Now, obviously, if I have to give the customer this reader to get a, a speedy service, then I will. But the one thing I don't want to do is give her this reader and then end up without one myself. So I would have to charge like 60, 60 £65 pound for this repair. That's a little bit much really, considering the console only costs like £200, pound, £250 pound to buy. So it's a little bit much for a simple repair such as, such as this. So hopefully we can get this working just by giving it an ultrasonic clean. Now like I said, I can change just the cartridge. I have actually repaired these before. I've, I've done one where the customer brought it in with a headphone jack stuck in the port. Um, I, bought a, I bought a port off eBay for like £4 I think it was and I desoldered this port. That's actually a really simple job. So, and the customer obviously opted to have that done instead of changing the entire reader because of the cost. Um, and the cost isn't the labour, it's the part. It's just one of them things. Um, the cheapest available is around £35 from China. So, yeah, even if you ordered it from China and waited like six, seven weeks for it to come, you, you look, you're still looking at a £50 repair. Um, you may as well, if when you're going that far into it, you may as well pay the extra £10 and get the repair done in a couple of days. These are the connectors I really, really hate. I really don't like these connectors at all. They're horrible. They're absolutely horrible to get back in. Right, I think that's connected this time. Right, so let's pop the battery back in this. Let's turn this back on. There we go. Okay, so we have touchscreen. And now the question is, do we have Minecraft? Yes, we do. Oh, that's awesome. Unable to access. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, so it's still intermittent. Which means it probably is just dirty inside. Because that red then...
So when you put it in fast, it works. That's weird. It might be a case with this one of using the paintbrush and going down there into the uh, contacts. Because that is reading. Right, so that's in now. Nope. Nope. Right. So you see what's happening here, don't you? When I'm pressing down on that, are you going to press down on the BGA chip or what? No. Right, okay. Um right, let's take it back off. Right, so let's pop mine in. Right, so that's in. Let's pop the touch screen back in. Oh, let's uh, let's pop that in. Okay. Straight away, that red. Start software. Yeah, that's working. Right, so let's get down and dirty and try and clean this properly, shall we? So let's pop that to one side for now. So I've got myself a paintbrush. So I've got to give this a clean because it's got flux on it. So I'm going to go and wash this first and then I'll be back to give the cartridge reader a clean. Right, so unfortunately I can't find a paintbrush. Right, so this is a bad card reader and if you take a look inside there, we're supposed to have three pins on the left and then two pins on all of the rest of them and you can see clearly that one of those pins is slightly misshaped. So some of those pins are definitely damaged. Now the unfortunate thing is I'm not going to be able to open it up to access it. Um, well actually I might be able to. If I desolder that, um, I'm going to desolder this because this is faulty anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some wick and I'm going to desolder these two points here. I'm also going to desolder these here and this one. Here. So I'm going to desolder all the points around it. I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to get inside this. I'm going to try and straighten those pins out. I'm going to try and fix this. Because this is a £50 part. This is not cheap. By any stretch of the imagination, this is not a cheap part. So 
I'm going to take this off and I'm going to try and repair it. Here we are, we are inside the cartridge reader. So, let's take a look here. If we take a look at the actual cartridge reader itself, that's a little weird spring thing. But if we take a look at the card reader itself, it looks as though these pins are meant to be pushed down. So I'm just going to pop them all back into the guides. And that one's definitely out of place. So what I'm doing here is literally just trying to pop these back into position because they're definitely out of place. It doesn't look like there's any missing. But I think what these are meant to look like is I think they're meant to actually be kind of sprung up so when you put the card read the card in to the reader it kind of like pushes down on the connector as it's sliding in i'm not going to solder it back on i can buy one of these for 20 quid an actual reader i can buy one for 20 quid so that is an option right i'm not going to put that back on but i am going to test it in the switch and see what's happening now So we've got touch, so I didn't damage it. But it's not reading it. Yep, could not be read. Okay. Hmm. So it might be a case of ordering one then. Right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to contact the customer and I'm going to tell her that it's going to need a new card reader and what I'm going to do I'm not going to I'm not going to charge her the uh, the 65 pound that it's going to cost I'm going to buy the actual card reader so I'm going to put this console to one side and I'm going to buy the actual card reader card reader itself for 20 pound I'm going to desolder it off there and I'm going to fix that I'm going to put a new one a new card reader itself on so I'm going to I'm going to stop this video I'm going to speak to the customer see what she says see if she agrees at um 
you know, like £40 total with the fitting. And uh, if she does, then I'll resume the video and we'll get it, we'll get the console fixed. So, until we meet again, see you soon. 2,000 years later. Okay, so it's been a couple of days since I ended the video and I've spoken to the customer and we obviously agreed that I could change the card reader because that's what it needs in order to get this working again. And quite a few things have actually been said since then. So I ordered this part. This cost this cost twenty pound from eBay or just under twenty pound from eBay. And she, I sent her a message this morning or this afternoon rather. So I basically said, just letting you know that the new car, the new cartridge reader has turned up today. So I'll be get I'll get that done for this evening if that's okay. And she put, yeah, that's great, but cannot pick up tonight as I work at the hospital. Uh, so it'll be some time to Moz. So the basically she didn't tell me the other day that she she works for the NHS, but I did see a badge around her neck. So for those of you that don't know, I do free labour, completely free, no questions asked for NHS workers, and. Well, not just NHS workers, police, NHS, fire brigade, um, anyone who's a key worker, pretty much. Um, and she didn't tell me. And I, I don't think she knew that I did free labour for NHS workers. So, basically, I've sent her a message back saying, look, it's you, you work for the NHS, I'm not going to charge you any labour, just pay for the part and I'm happy. And I'm more than happy to do this job for free. Um, I'm not going to lose any money on it, all I'm going to lose is probably half an hour's worth of time. So, I'm really not bothered. Um, you know, I, I would much rather do this for free. Show my appreciation to the people that are putting their neck on the line every single day for me and you. So, yeah, that's the situation with this. So, the, the card reader turned up this morning, like I said. Or the cartridge reader, rather. Turned up this morning, and it's actually got one bent pin, but that's not going to be too much of an issue. So you can see just in the middle there's a bent pin. Uh, it's kind of out of shape. I can bend that back when it comes to it, when we uh, actually change it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some leaded solder to all of these bottom pins here, because I can't really use heat on this to take this card, card reader off. It's too big, and there's also plastic connectors on the back. So... I can't use heat to take this off, so I'm going to add some leaded solder, and then I'm just going to run across with the soldering iron, lifting up as I go along very gently, making sure that all of these are melted before I actually lift up, and I'm going to get this removed as safely as I possibly can, and hopefully, hopefully we can get the new one soldered on. I'm not going to say guarantee because I've never done one of these, but hopefully we can get the new one soldered on. And I could actually snap the pins. It's not going to be an issue if I snap the pins on this because, you know, they're not going to be used again. Um, and these come away on four corners. So these come away on four corners and then you can lift it up and it bends out that way towards the pins. So I could actually snap the pins if I need to um, and then just remove them with a soldering iron afterwards when I can actually access them. Uh, so I think that might be an option. It's not going to cause any damage to the actual module itself fingers crossed we can get this console working as it should be for the customer right, so the way I removed it the other day was I popped the tweezers in between here because I can't really put heat on the board because it's too thin it'll just burn the board you can't really put heat on these boards at all Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to use the heat gun on a low airflow, um, around four out of eight.
I'm just wondering if there's anything on the back that I should be. Ah, right. Okay, there's a couple of pins on the back as well. Didn't know that. I didn't know there was a couple of pins on the back. Oh, have they moved him? Oh, there's one there. Right. I don't want to use heat on this at all. Right, so they're just pads on here now. Right, you see it's coming up. There we go. There we go. That's off, you see. Well, right, so that's the old one. And here's the new one that's going to go on. Okay, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to clean up this entire area. There we go. Right, okay. So now we should be ready to pop this new one on. Or actually, let's tin those pads first of all.
Beautiful. Right, I did get a dab of solder on the screw hole, so I'm going to have to clean that off. There we go. Okay, so let's add some more flux. It's a little bit difficult to uh, solder this because it's so light. I'm just going to get this in position. Okay, and now we're just going to run across with the soldering iron. Time for the back legs. So one of the back legs is slightly bent, so let's pop that in there like so, and I'll just keep a bit of pressure on it just to make sure it doesn't pop back out. One. Okay, that should be done. Right, let me just check these back legs. So I'm just going to give it a little clean. And I'm going to run it through the ultrasonic as well. But I just want to check these back legs, make sure they're clean before we do. Now make sure they're soldered rather. Should be okay. Good. Okay, so let's check them. 
So what I'm going to do is check him. I'm just going to use some tweezers and just give him the nudge test. Okay, so three's not soldered. Sorry, number four, not three. Okay, so just number three to do. Number four, rather, not number three. Number three is loose as well. Alright, let's check these once more. Oh, there's a few loose. Alright, I'm going to go over them once more then. Okay, we're all good. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this into the ultrasonic. Give it a few minutes in there, give it a nice clean, and then we'll get to testing, shall we? Right, okay, so giving this a nice clean in the ultrasonic bath, and it's looking good. So we've got a couple of, uh, couple of pins a little bit out of shape, but none of them are shorting out. Not that I can tell. We should be good to go. So let's get the console. And let's flip it around the right way so it actually goes in properly. There we go. So that's clipped in. Right, so I'm going to get a couple of screws and just pop some screws in this. Simple reason being is I don't want to be damaging the connectors. So let's pop that black cover over. And I know this screw doesn't go in until the cover goes on. But I'm going to put it in anyway.
There we go. Just pop the battery back in. Turn it on. Three, two, one. We have the Nintendo logo. Let's knock that light off. Okay, so let's get a game. Right, okay, so we've got Minecraft, same as before. So I'm going to pop that in the cartridge slot. There we go. That, my friends, is one working card reader. Oh, that's brilliant. That's excellent news. For some reason we don't have any speakers. Why is the volume dip? I'll get mad. <laughs> I'll get mad, I swear. Oh my god, I didn't even think to check the damn volume. Oh my god. Alright, everything's working. Fine. Cool. I'm happy. Right, let's put this back together. And there we go. The final thing to do. Is we're going to take some isopropyl alcohol. On a piece of tissue. And all we're going to do. Is just give this screen a little wipe down. get rid of any gunk that's built up while we've had it in the workshop send it back to the customer nice and clean and then just dry it off so this workshop isn't the cleanest environment and for that reason I do make a point of cleaning everything before it leaves the workshop I wouldn't want to get my stuff back dirty so there we go that's that Let's pop the Joy-Cons in. And there we go. I'll just give it one final test. Software was closed because the game card was removed. So let's pop it back in. And you see it comes up there. Out. In. Out. In. Can 
cancel the download. Start the software. There we go. So that, ladies and gents, is one working switch. Um, I'm super happy that I managed to get this one working, especially even more so that she is a key worker. Um, so just to summarize, this console wasn't reading cartridges because of bent pins inside the card reader. Now these card readers are cheap enough to buy. Um, don't buy, if you've got any soldering skills at all, don't go ahead and buy the actual entire module because you can buy just the card reader on its own. 17 pins, two gra six ground legs, and you've got yourself a brand new working card reader. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. As always, leave me a thumbs up if you like the video and you want to see more trying to fix videos. Please remember to hit the subscribe button. It really will help out the channel a lot. I'm trying my damn hardest to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And if you hit that subscribe button, it would really mean a lot to me. Thanks very much for watching, guys. And until next time, see you all later. Bye for now.